visual clutter that may be on the screen. This session is being recorded, which means we will be posting it to our website. Also, all the information that we're going over will be in the job, job creation grant manual that you can find on our website. And we will be sending out the PowerPoint slides um, in upcoming days. There will be time for questions using the chat feature. If you have a question during the presentation, please put that question in the chat feature and I will answer all of the questions at the end of the presentation. My name is Kate Pickett. I am the program administrator for the Virginia Enterprise Zone program, which is part of the Department of Housing and Community Development. Our mission statement is to be committed to creating safe, affordable, and prosperous communities to live, work, and do business in Virginia. The Enterprise Zone program is part of the Community Revitalization Office. Our vision statement is that we're committed to coaching communities in a way that is resourceful, collaborative, educational, inspirational, and practicable so that they are empowered to take actions that build local capacity. The Enterprise Zone program consists of 45 zones throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. They start as far east as Zone 26 in Accomack and North Hampton counties, and as far west as the Wise County Zone, which is Zone 52. As you can see on the map, most of the Enterprise Zones are in the southwestern area of the Commonwealth. I like to start the presentation with a snapshot of last year so that you can get a good idea of, of how many grants we have um, allocated last year and um, what those numbers look like. We awarded a total of 196 JCG and RPIG grants. So JCG is job creation grants and RPIG is real property investment grants. 42 businesses received job creation grants for a total of over 1.9 million in total awards. That included 2,740 jobs that were created or retained by those businesses. 154 properties um, were part of the Real Property Investment Grant Program. That was over $12.5 million in total awards. And those zone investors who applied for Real Property Investment Grants um, spent over $347 million in qualified investments and leveraged those dollars to receive that real property investment grant. The program is a partnership between state and local governments to encourage job creation and private investment in targeted areas or zones throughout the state by providing two grant-based incentives, the Job Creation Grant and the Real Property Investment Grant. The program is subject to annual appropriation by the General Assembly. The jobs must be created and improvements must be completed before a business or a zone investor may receive grant money. Um, due to legislation, the job creation grants are funded at 100%, and then the remaining funds are utilized or allocated to real property investment grants. For this reason, the RPIGs are often prorated. Um, the last grant year, which was grant year 2020, they were prorated at 88%, and in grant year 2019, the grants were prorated at 84 cents on the dollar. Um, usually in the past, proration has been around 70 to 75%. So um, these grants were prorated less in the last two years, and we're hoping that they'll be prorated even less in this upcoming year. We are always hoping for more funding so that we can continue to um, expand the program and give those grants without proration. Our entire program is based on the calendar year. That includes the procedures and the documentation necessary for the grants. It's really important to um, notice that hard copies are no longer accepted. In the past, we accepted both hard copies and electronic version. Last year, because of COVID, we um, had to have an electronic version and not just a hard copy version. From this year, moving forward, we will no longer accept hard copies, only electronic submission. All applications must be submitted via the Enterprise Zone Submission Portal by 11.59 p.m. on April 1st, 2022. That is a Friday this year. Um, that deadline includes not only your application, but all forms and documentation 
that is a part of that application must be submitted by the deadline to be considered on time. And that also includes that CPA attestation. Um, there's a link to the submission portal that is a live link that you can click on. Um, we will also put it in the chat box before the end of this presentation. Qualifying for job creation grants. The JCG is available to businesses that create high wage, full-time permanent positions with health benefits that are net new jobs for Virginia. And all of those are um, very specific eligibility requirements that we're going to go over, including the wage portion, full-time permanent, and then health benefits, but also the net new jobs for Virginia. They cannot be jobs that were moved from one enterprise zone to another or one locality to another. Ineligible businesses include units of government, which are federal, state, or local government, nonprofits, except those classified, which are business and professional organizations. Um, nonprofits may qualify for the Real Property Investment Grant if the end use is commercial, but not for this grant, the Job Creation Grant. Qualifying for Job Creation Grants. JCGs are available to any eligible businesses, new or existing, that are located in that are located in an enterprise zone who have created grant eligible jobs over base year employment levels. So what does base year mean? The base year is either of the two calendar years immediately preceding a firm's first year of grant eligibility. So if a firm is applying for a job creation grant this year for grant year 2021 and it's their first time applying, then they may use 2020 or 2019 as their base year. So that means that the number of employees that they had in 2020 or 2019 would be their base year number. New businesses will have a base year employment of zero. There is a four job threshold for qualification that must be met. Therefore, businesses must create at least five jobs to qualify for a grant. And on our JCG worksheet, which we're going to go over in detail, four permanent full-time positions, that's the PFTP, is equal to 48 months on the JCG worksheet. So if you are a new business and you're applying uh, this year for grant year 2021 and before uh, you had a employment of zero because you're a new business, that would be your base year. So that means you must create at least five jobs to qualify. We would subtract those first four jobs that meet the threshold and you would qualify for one job creation grant. And we'll go over that in more detail as well. Eligible positions. Eligible positions must be net new to Virginia, permanent and full-time, and they must earn at least 175% of the federal minimum wage. Um, if they receive one, if they earn at least 175% of the federal minimum wage, then they will be eligible for a specific amount. And if they earn at least 150%, they'll be eligible for a specific amount. And we'll go over that in upcoming slides as well. They must be offered health benefits. Restricted positions include personal service, food and beverage, and retail. It's important to note that um, some businesses may have a mixture of different types of positions. So if you're a business, maybe you are a hotel and you're applying for a job creation grant and you have some um, jobs that are considered food and beverage because you have a restaurant in your hotel and you have a gift shop. So you might have some retail positions. Those positions are not eligible, but that doesn't mean that the other positions in the hotel that are not personal service, food and beverage or retail are not eligible. Those would be eligible. So it's based on position um, qualification. It's not based on one qualification for the property or the company. Permanent full-time positions. What does that mean um, for our definition? Those are jobs of indefinite duration at a business firm located in an enterprise zone, requiring the employee to report to work within the zone on a regular basis. So that is at least once a month. So with COVID-19 and with a lot of businesses having their employees work from home, that brings up a lot of questions about whether report to work is different um, under these circumstances. And the answer to that is that yes, it is considered different. So here's how we will be defining report to work for this upcoming year. 
And we will also send out a white paper on this or post it on our website so that everyone has this information. If a position was created that was intended to be fully work from home without any report to work requirement or without the at least once a month report to work requirement, then it would not be eligible. But if a position was created that is work from home but requires reporting to the office at least once a month, or is work from home temporarily due to the pandemic, then it would be eligible for job creation grants. The position must be normally scheduled to work either of these three characteristics, a minimum of 35 hours per week for at least 48 weeks of the year, a minimum of 35 hours per week for a portion of the taxable year in which an employee was hired, or a minimum of 1,680 hours per year if standard fringe benefits are paid by the business firm. The application process. So odds, I'm seeing a really big uh, problem there with that year. I apologize. DHCD is now accepting JCG applications for grant year 2021 from businesses that have increased employment over their base year by more than the four job eligibility. So that should be during calendar year 2021. So this upcoming grant year is grant year 2021. It's for jobs added within calendar year 2021, January 1st to December 31st of 2021. And I apologize, I thought I corrected that. Um, as provided in the um, section of the code 59.1-547, a CPA attestation is, re is a required component to all job creation grant applications, except when the applicant has a base year employment of less than or equal to 100 permanent full-time positions and, which is the key word, grant eligible positions are less than or equal to 25 permanent full-time positions. Otherwise, a CPA attestation is necessary. Calculating awards. Job creation grant awards are determined based on wage rates and the number of full months worked in the grant year. A zone investor may receive up to $500 a year per net new permanent full-time position, earning at least 175% of the federal, federal minimum wage. And that would be $500 per year for those positions earning at least 150% in high unemployment areas. And they must be offered health benefits. And then for $800 a year job creation grants, um, you may receive those for permanent new full-time positions earning at least 200% of federal, federal minimum wage with health benefits. All businesses can receive grants for up to 350 positions per year. Um, any number over that would not be eligible. And currently the federal minimum wage is $7.25 an hour. So this chart shows you the wage rate threshold, um, the percent of the federal minimum wage, the grant per permanent full-time position, and eligible businesses. And we're going to talk a little bit about HUA businesses in an upcoming slide. Calculating awards, here's an example. If you're applying this year in 2021 and you use 2019 as your base year and your base year employment level is 10 permanent full-time employees and your grant year employment level is 20 permanent full-time employees. All positions meet other eligibility requirements. So they're earning 175% of the federal minimum wage. They worked January 1st to December 31st, 2021, and all of them were offered health benefits equal to at least 50% of the premium. So you would take your grant year employment level, which is 20, subtract your base year employment level, which is 10, and then also subtract the four job threshold you would equal six grant eligible permanent full-time positions. You multiply that by the $500 grant and you can receive a job creation grant award of up to $3,000. High unemployment areas. Businesses located in high unemployment areas referred to in this presentation as HUAs are eligible to apply for the job creation grant at the reduced wage rate threshold of $10.88 an hour or 150% of federal minimum wage. Um, you can see here in this chart, the localities are listed as well as their zone numbers. 
any existing business that has previously applied for the job creation grant as an HUA applicant in one of the zones that was previously an HUA zone but is no longer may continue to qualify at 150% of the federal minimum wage for the remainder of their five-year grant period. Any new businesses applying for the job creation grant in those zones that were previously HUAs must pay at least 175% of the federal minimum wage to qualify. The grant term is a period of five consecutive years as long as they maintain or increase employment over their base year employment by at least five net new permanent full-time positions. So that's one permanent full-time employee over the four job threshold. Business firms who have finished their first five-year grant period may qualify for a subsequent grant period, provided that they are still creating new jobs that are eligible to receive job creation grants. So for a subsequent grant periods initiated within two years of the previous five-year term, the base year must be the last grant year term. For a subsequent period initiate, initiated more than two years, after the previous five-year term, the base year term must be one of the two preceding years. The job creation grant worksheet. We are going to look at that. It's really important to know it's an Excel sheet. It should be filled out from left to right. Do not skip any of the columns. When you're filling it out, don't jump forward to a column on the right because it may disrupt or mess up some of the formulas and mess up your calculations. Some cells are hidden, some are locked to protect formulas, and cells will turn red to signal potential errors. And I forgot to mention that the pictures throughout this presentation are pictures of zone investors, businesses, companies who have received job creation grants or real property investment grants in the last couple of years. Here's a sample of the job creation grant worksheet. It is an Excel spreadsheet once again, you fill it out left to right and you do not skip columns. As you can see here on the left, you have an employee number. Um, the CPA will use this worksheet and they will include on this column, the second column, whether it was included in their sample. You'll have the employee name and the last four digits of their social. And then you have a chunk of three columns for the base year. If an employee did not work in the base year, then you would not put any information in these columns. If they did, then you put their first work date in the base year, their last work date in the base year, and then the blue column is auto calculated to show you the months that the employee had permanent full time employment worked in the base year. Then here you are doing the grant year totals. You would put the first work date in the grant year, the last work date in the grant year, and the months worked in the blue column are auto calculated. Um, you have to write here if they were offered health benefits. If they were not, it's better to not include them on this list because they're not eligible for a grant position. If you do include them on this sheet, it's important that um, here, um, the reason that it's blackened out is because they were not offered the health benefits and therefore are not eligible. Um, these that are highlighted in red are listed twice because let's pretend that Henry Lee II worked at the beginning of the year in a position for three months. He went on to do something else and then came back and worked in that position for the last three months of the year. He must be listed twice to list those two different times in which that he worked. You can't combine them or average the total. All JCG applicants must complete a worksheet. The worksheets to be completed by non-HUA businesses for net new positions are for earning at least $12.69 an hour. And the HUA worksheet is specific to those localities that are high unemployment areas. And that's to be completed by HUA businesses for net new positions earning at least $10.88 per hour. The worksheet calculates the grant eligible positions filled during the grant year. And these are some of the things that we just spoke about in the previous slide. All employees filling permanent full-time positions um, in the base year and grant year must be included. Positions that should not be included are positions that are not permanent, they may be contracted or seasonal, are not full-time, 
part-time or as needed, are not meeting the report to work requirement, and our food and beverage retail and personal service. Um, also, you don't want to include any, excuse me, I didn't mean to click that, churned positions. Churned positions are positions that started in one company um, in one zone and were moved from a different place in the Commonwealth to another company or to another zone. Wage info only needs to be listed for permanent full-time positions hired after the base year through December 31st of 2021 that have been offered those health benefits. An employee given a raise during the grant year must be entered on separate lines for each wage rate, just like how those employees were listed twice and were highlighted in red in the previous slide. Salary and wages. Divide an employee's annual salary by 1,820 hours to get their wage rate. Include shift premiums and commissions. Do not include bonuses or overtime. That is not eligible. Calculations must be shown in the CPA's attestation report. So a salary conversion example looks like this. If the annual salary is $32,000, the conversion rate is 1,820 hours. So that 32,000 divided by the 1,820 hours equals $17.58 per hour as your wage rate. Printing worksheets. Although we are not accepting hard copies anymore, it's important that you print a hard copy for your records. Um, it, it specifies on here that the worksheet is equipped with formulas in place for 3,000 rows. That's a huge worksheet. Um, this um, will explain exactly how to print it. You want to print all the rows unless the print range is specified by the applicant. Um, at the bottom is where you will see the printing instructions and it will tell you exactly how to print it for your own records. Required materials. All application materials are available online at the Easy Submission Portal site and must be submitted by 11.59 p.m. on April 1st, 2021. For those of you that are local zone administrators, applications are not done through CAMS, they're done through the Easy Portal site. Um, let's see. This is an old slide. I apologize. There are no hard copies this year. I'm not sure. I might have pulled up the wrong presentation that hadn't been edited yet, so I apologize for that. Um, included are your Form Easy JCG, your Commonwealth of Virginia W-9, which um, must be included, and we cannot have or accept the federal W-9. You must have that Commonwealth of Virginia W-9 in order to have the appropriate information to receive your check. The CPA attestation report must be submitted at the time of application and your JCG worksheet. And that is a necessary component for all year one applications. So this is what the easy portal system looks like. You will see on the right in the blue, there are columns for the job creation grant. There is an LZA verification form and an applicant declaration form that I have circled. Those are two other required documents. The LZA verification is a document that you are going to have your local zone administrator in your locality fill out and sign. You will scan that document in and upload it into the portal. You also have your applicant declaration form. That is a form that you will print, sign, and upload, and that is declaring that all of the information that you have provided is correct and factual. So let's look over your Form Easy JCG, um, or if you happen to be in a high unemployment area, you're going to use Form Easy JCG HUA. These forms are organized into four parts. And it is important to know that if you're in one of those high unemployment areas, you need to use the HUA Easy JCG form and the HUA worksheet. Part one is background information. Here you fill out your information with your legal name, a trading name if different than legal name, your FEIN, um, your activity number, which are the first three digits of the NAICS code, the physical address of the zone establishment, and then you type, um, you check whether you are filling out a standard application for non HUAs or a high unemployment area application. You also um, will have the LZA sign that form as well and fill in their information. 
Part two is qualification info. So on this form, this is where you're going to be calculating and um, recording information that is on your worksheet. Um, the first part of it shows the number of all equivalents of the permanent full-time positions filled. Um, then you're going to have the increase in the number of positions and the net new jobs created. The bottom part, part six, is your grant request. That is the requested JCG award for permanent full-time positions earning at least 200%. And then the next line is for those earning at least 150%. Those are your two different amounts of grant awards at $800 and $500, respectively. The CPA attestation requirement is waived if a firm has a base year employment of 100 or fewer positions and creates 25 or fewer grant eligible positions. Waiver eligibility must be determined each year. If you have a waiver the first year, that does not mean you necessarily will the second year. It's all based on that base year employment and how many positions you are creating. The firm must still complete the JCG worksheet and submit it to DHCD for review. DHCD staff will monitor each firm who is able to waive the attestation requirement annually using the procedures outlined in the CPA attestation manual. So as you saw when I accidentally clicked, it is now time for your questions. Um, and if Rebecca will please help me um, gathering those questions, that would be wonderful. I don't see any questions in the chat box. Would anyone like to type a question in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask a question as well. Once again, Kate, it looks like you must have been wildly thorough. We don't have any questions coming through. I um, typed the link for the Enterprise Zone portal. That's where you can find all the documents, including the supplemental documents. That's where you would actually also submit your application. Also, I'll type in my email address and my phone number for anyone who might need it. And I accidentally typed my name incorrectly, so I'm going to retype that email address. This is Kate's um, third training this week. It is not easy to be on camera and to be presenting all week long, but um, we really appreciate everyone attending. We appreciate questions. We also appreciate if, like I said, Kate was so thorough that no one has any questions at this point, but uh, would like to thank you all for being here and Kate for, her um, good work with the presentations and the strong trainings that she puts on for the CPAs, the LZAs, and the zone investors. Thank you, Rebecca, and thank you all for your time. And please don't hesitate to reach out to me if I can help you in any way through the grant process. Hope you all have a good day.